Hi, it's good to be with you again today. Today I want us to discuss how we navigate uh, negative relationships. We've all heard the question posed, do you see the glass as half full or half empty? Uh, we've all heard about the kid who came home with 85 on his exam and his dad just focused on the 15% that he, he missed. Within all of our spheres, there are people who are positive, upbeat. It seems no matter what's happening in their lives, they have a smile on their face and they're enthusiastic and they're life-giving to be around. On the other end of the spectrum, we also have people in our lives who you know, tend to focus mainly upon the 15 points that were missed. How do we deal with people who constantly are complaining or grumbling or speaking negatively of their context or life or other people? As Christians, sometimes we feel obligated to stay in such people's lives. Uh, we feel that we're a voice of reason, that we are to bring the love of Christ into their life and to somehow, uh, hopefully, uh, spur them on uh, to looking at life differently. However, I have seen cases where good people uh, ended up being dragged into a very negative uh, way of looking at life and mainly it's been as a result of their company. The scripture tells us that bad company uh, corrupts good character and that's the truth. I want to offer you a few simple steps uh, based on the scripture today in how to deal with negative people. First, Matthew 7 and 5 or 4 to 5 tells us that we are to take a look at ourselves. The big question that looms over all of our heads is this one. Are we contributing to that? Are we contributing uh, negative elements to the conversation? Uh, Jesus said, you know, before you correct someone else, look at yourself. Because in actuality, uh, you may have the bigger issue. It, the issue may be in your heart as opposed to theirs. So it's so important that first we consider ourselves. How are we starting those conversations? How are we feeding that negative attitude or are we encouraging uh, those negative conversations in some way? Secondly, live a positive life. We are to speak positive. We are to look for the glimmers of hope in bad situations. We're to look for the silver lining in the gray clouds. That's our role as believers. It is to look into the scriptures to find good things to bring forth and out of our hearts we can bring forth good things that will encourage others philippians 4 and 8 informs us whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable excellent or praiseworthy think on these things speak these things thirdly pray for the person in prayer, the Holy Spirit will shed light upon two, two elements at least. He will shed additional light upon our own contribution to that relationship. And secondly, he will shed light on uh, how we can navigate that relationship going forward. Fourthly, after considerable prayer, speak honestly to the individual about what you perceive. <coughs> Excuse me. You may be wrong but chances are you're right. Speak kindly and gently to the person concerning the conversations you're having, uh, their tendencies to always look at the negative as opposed to the positive. And in you having the conversation with them from a position of love and compassion and gentleness, uh, you may be able to help them unlock the deep secrets of their own hearts. We are all products of our own families of origin. And sometimes we have bl blind spots uh, in our lives and we're not even aware of it. Many times I've been reminded of things in my life by people who care about me. And as I've thought upon it and pondered, I've discovered, mm-hmm, yeah, you know, there, were, there was truth in those uh, 
elements that they have talked about. And so, you know, having a healthy conversation. Be careful about the conversation. Pray about it, but enter into it with confidence. Again, finally, after you've explored all these uh, steps, there is a final step the Bible encourages us to follow through on. It's a difficult step. It's a severing of relationship. We can pull this principle from Titus 3 and 10. In Titus 3 and 10, Paul said to Titus, concerning negative, divisive people, speak correctively to that individual once and even speak to them about it a second time. After that, sever the relationship. Why? Because if not, over time, there will become a noticeable change in your perspective on life. You may be affected and even infected by the spirit from which they operate. Let's take a moment today to pray for these individuals. Father, we present to you today individuals in our lives who we discern see life from a negative perspective. Yes, they've had difficult circumstances. Yes, they may have even been hurt by people in leadership. Maybe they've had negative experiences even in the church. But Father, we pray today for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to help us to navigate those conversations and to shed light upon their behavior. And God, may we by your grace be able to be agents of change in their lives. However, Father, if at the end of the day we're unable to do that, we pray that you will give us grace to sever those relationships for a season. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week, and I pray that you will bring positive energy, life, and truth into every relationship that's in your orbit of influence. In Jesus' name. Amen.